Hello and welcome to today's Just Chops In podcast. And with David and myself, we have legendary Welsh drummer, Bob Richards. How are you, Bob? Good evening. I got Bob. my Jack and Coke. Bob's got his, <laughs> got his hard drink in front of him. There's me on the wall. It's a nice day and... Uh... I've been down Cardiff Road Park with the wife for a lovely walk around the lake and walking through the trees. It's fantastic. So, you know, come on, let's have a lot of Jack and Coke. Nice, good. Yeah. And as you can see, I'm uh, the odd one out today because I don't have a hat on, even though I no. should have. Well, like I said earlier, like, I don't want to see my hair at the moment. I'm right? <laughs> the state of my hair. I had a shave this morning. Yeah, I did as well. Yeah, ah. <laughs> for there. Are you more scruffy than this? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, hang on. Bong. Well, as you can see, David's got a Buck and Evans t-shirt on and Bob yes. currently plays with Buck and Evans and also Son of Man and yeah. ATAC, is it, Bob? Correct, ATAC. Yeah, yeah that's that's a recent a recent uh, kind of band, yeah. Um, I had a message from Chris Charles, bass player from Thunder, and he said, um, would you be interested in, in you know, in joining this, this band? And uh, he, he sent me a couple of things. I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. You know, so um, I got involved and they did that video and uh, we got our, an actual first rehearsal next Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, cool. Okay. Ready for our show um, in Brad Bradstock Festival. In, That's um, first Bradford, to me, that is, isn't it? Bradford. Yeah, just yeah, inglorious of playing, bad touch, blonde's black. Just our first gig. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like... No pressure then. And we haven't really had a... One rehearsal. Yeah. And How we, many we songs got, have you got? Well, we we only do with forty minutes at, at the gig, so we've got enough. Uh, Keith actually sent out um, some MP3s and a bit and a list earlier, so uh, I'm just going to be listening to that constantly. And uh, we, like I said, we got two days block book. Ah, okay. In the in the middle, yeah. so we're just going to crack on with it. So, um, and we have got uh, some other shows uh, booked. Uh, we're just going to be like a 90 minute thing, so there's more songs going to have to be added. So, okay, like I said, it's a, it's, a, it's a new band again, so I mean, three original bands. Yeah, so, you know. will you be doing any covers then with this new band? Or, um, yeah, I think there's, there's, a, there's one or two going to be um slipped in there because of, we haven't got enough original yet, I don't think, unless Keith got mm. a load of his sleeve that he hasn't told us about. Yeah, I'm sure we'll we'll. We bang one or two new ones out in the rehearsal, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to be um, a monster drum drum solo. No. <laughs> no I, I, I'm Thirty-five not, minutes. No, I, I'm not keen on those things, you know. I'm I'm less keen on drum solos as I get older. Yeah. When, when I was young, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, but no, I don't care about them. I'm just not interested. It's like drum clicks. <laughs> I'm not interested in drum clicks either. I like yeah. I like. Um, I like grooves and songs rather than real, you know, fiddling around the drum kit and, and breakneck speed and stuff, you know, it's like songs. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it's because I'm getting slower in my old age, I don't know. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you've been doing it for, you know, I a long that, time, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I think you said true. I read one. Yeah, I was going to say, is it true you started at three? Yeah, something like that, but, you know, you just, at three years old, you don't even know what the hell the drum is, do you? You just hit it. Yeah, you yeah, just bang it, don't you? Boing, and you go, ah, oh, that's cool. Um, my grandfather played the drums. He, he played the drums all his life. Um, and he was in the Air Force big band in the Second World War. And when he came back, he went, went in the clubs and played in the clubs. And I remember him buying me one of those little toy kits again, the catalogues. Oh, back right. when I was about three years old. Mm. Um, and I wrecked that. Uh, when I was about four and a half, he gave me the kit that he he had, which I've still got. And he went and bought a brand new Premier in 1969, late 69, which I've still got that as well. Oh, right, okay. Along with my other 12 kits. You know, but, uh, yeah, so so he, he kind of showed me some basics. 
and then I remember playing along to like Hellraiser by the Sweet. Oh yeah, yeah. And songs like that, and um, oh, I must—I don't know how old it was. No idea. What seventy-three was this? Eight. Yeah, eight, yeah, eight. sweet, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Um, and then I just ended up playing in the clubs because he said, "Right, come down to the club and sit there." I was like, mm. I was nine in the clubs then. No oh, way. Okay. Yeah, that's young, isn't it? As we take it. Long, long there. time ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's you know. I don't know, like kids were allowed, were allowed in clubs then, really, weren't they? I mean, obviously you wouldn't like to drink at nine years old, but you could always go in and sit with your mum and dad or... Yeah, you know, I guess so. I guess pop so. the crisps. But to be yeah. honest, it, it, was a, it was a fabulous learning curve. Yeah, I bet, yeah. Because I had to learn to trust these and those and, and my gut feeling of, as to what was going on and how I had to react to, to things. And then, then I'd have to, you know, we'd have singers coming in and stuff and... I'd be playing songs with them, so I'd be just, just watching them and reacting to whatever I was being like indicated to do, or you know, quieter, louder, cut, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think you know that's I'm an instinctive player. I react. Okay. So that's I think that's where that was born. I was never taught. Okay. You never sat me down and said, "Right, this is what you've got to do." Da, 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 da. I mean, yeah, my grand said, "This is a single stroke. This is a double stroke." This is a waltz. This is a fox shot. This is whatever. Yeah, but he he kind of like you know he, he let me get on with it to be honest with you. Mm. But like I said, I'm I'm, I'm an instinctive player. Even now, if I'm recording something now in the studio, um, I just like to go in and just say roll the tape or whatever, hit record, and I'll just <laughs> just go and see what happens, see what comes out, and then I go back in and I listen to it and I go I like that bit, I like that bit, don't like that bit, I need to fix that fill. So yeah. then I go in and repair it. So you comp in it. So I, I'm not the type of drummer to kind of have a, a plan and knowing exactly what I'm going to do and, and when it's going to happen, a structure. So I don't really play the, the, any song exactly the same every day. Oh, right, okay. So, so you're like, always improvising then? Oh, yeah. Yeah, but within within the kind of parameters of what the song is, I guess. Yeah, 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 obviously, yeah. Um. I, I remember rehearsing with Shy years ago and, and Steve Harris, the guitar player, I mean, bless him, he's gone now and uh, an awesome, awesome guy, awesome player. And he said to me once, he said, you never played the same fill twice, do you? I said, well, there or thereabouts, not really. You know, I said, I just, I like to react how I feel at that time is is what kind of comes out, you know? Yeah. yeah. So maybe something in that, in that ballpark you know, we're around the same spot, but it may not be exactly the same because I think in to, to do that exactly the same every night, it, you end up being like a, I don't know, a robot. But Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Mm. I shouldn't say that because, you know, you got an ACDC t-shirt on there and, and since I did the, the videos years ago, I have a massive respect for Phil Rudd um, and their music and you know, how kind of strict he is and uh, with the band and what mm. he played. And since I was asked to do um, a couple of gigs with Dirty DC and a few other tribute bands that I've, I've got and played a few songs, I've realised that if you play an ACDC stuff, it has to be done properly. Yeah, yeah. It has to be done properly. There's no other way around it. So um, I basically have to play it like he did. Okay. okay. If I went in and played it like anybody else, or, or just played off the top of my head, or off the cuff, or put loads of fills in, it would be wrong. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And and just totally, just like they don't say, "What are you doing?" You know. Yeah. But I realised that. So when I did those gigs with people, um, it was uh, yeah, Duty DC. I just kind of reined it in and played what Phil played. Yeah, yeah. Hardly any fills. Focus on the groove, keep it driving, and what fills what fills I did play were, you know, either the same as or very very similar to what Phil did or would have done. Yeah, yeah. You Do know. you think that was a lot of Malcolm's influence though? Because Malcolm was a real perfectionist when it came to the structure and everything, wasn't he? Yeah. Um. Well, I I I don't really know too much about, you know, their their history and how they worked and stuff. But I, you know, I've heard that 
it it was Markham's band. He was the boss. Yeah. And I think, you know, we probably said, yeah, play it like this, do this, do that, or keep it simple. Yeah, you know? yeah. But I think if it's grooving and it's rocking, you know, you don't need all those fills anyway. Mm. It takes it away from the song. Yeah, yeah, of course. And yeah. it's all about the song and about the groove at the end of the day. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I remembered um, it was not long after the videos. I was just, I was practicing there. I, I stick the iPad up and I was playing along to the River Plate gig all the way through it. I was like, wow, this is hard. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's hard because of what he didn't do. Yeah. yeah. That's the hard bit, is, is not putting any fills in, but hitting hit the right fills in the right spot. That was the hard bit. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so, I saw an interview with um, Massive Angus, respect. With Angus once, and he said Malcolm was just like a taskmaster over him all the time. Everything had to be perfect, you know? Right. Right, yeah. So, yeah, I think that was a lot of Malcolm's doing, I think. Yeah. Reading between the lines. Yeah. So, God yeah, bless him. I, I never met him. It's a shame. Yeah, yeah you, I suppose he was just, yeah. He was gone now. Gone now, wasn't he? Yeah. Bless him. Yeah. Yeah. There ain't many of them left now, really, is there? Yeah. These old rockers, they're all, you know, yeah, falling by the wayside slowly. Getting on. Yeah, that's the thing, you know, you don't realise you're getting older, I think. I don't, anyway, you know. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I'm probably not, I'm probably just about the same age as you, to be honest. Yeah, 36. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, 37. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I said, I was, I was talking to my old man the other day, and um, when they announced that Graham Bonnet is playing up in Steelhouse this year, and my dad was like, oh, how old is he? He must be, and, like, my dad seemed to think he was really old. And I, I looked, I said, oh, he's 74. That's it, oh, is yeah. he, you're younger than me. He's only a young guy there. And I was like, yeah, all right then. So uh, it is it is surprising, isn't it? You know, how quick time goes on. And you just assume all these rock stars are, are still the same age as they were when they started in the 80s Ooh. or when you saw them on Top of the Pops or saw them at Download or Donington I, or wherever you've I seen them. Yeah, I haven't been to the house for quite a few years. I played it three times. I did the first one. Then I did a Friday night with Back in Evans. Then we played on a Saturday afternoon. Um, I haven't been here for a while, but I I gotta go up and see Graham because he lives the other side of the world, you know. Mm. And I, I can't remember the last time I saw him. Uh, twenty sixteen, perhaps twenty seventeen. Um, when they played Cardiff, but um, because we did that tour in twenty fourteen in March. Um, so that was a hell of a year, twenty fourteen. Mm. So we yes, marched, marched to it with Grey and Bonnet. And in the October, I did the ACDC videos. Yeah. Ah, right, okay. She was like, wow. Brilliant. But playing the, the, the Grey and Bonnet tour was uh, was a dream come true for me. Literally, literally was. And um, I consider that to be like the, the pinnacle. Oh, cool. All oh, right, okay. To be honest with you, because... I saw Rainbow. My first gig with Rainbow was in Safari Gardens, March the fifth, nineteen eighty. Okay. On the Down to Earth tour. Um, just after their videos hit, you know, TV top of the pops, and uh, bought bought Down to Earth album, and then bought all the albums going backwards. I said, "Wow, this this is awesome." Yeah. And then I went to the first Monsters of Rock at Donington. I was only fifteen then, and uh, that was just phenomenal. And, yeah, and then you know, getting getting Cozy's kit as well, yeah. and then getting the opportunity to work with Graham. Yeah, I, I rang him up um, first time I talked to him. I met him before, like, but first time I talked to him on the phone for like an hour and a half. I said, right, we got this tour. He said, well, what do you want to play? I said, right. I said, I want to base it on a down to earth tour. I just want to for me, I just just like a geek. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he was amazing on the phone, and uh, I just said, right, well, this, 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 this. I said, but I don't want to do any solos, no long solos. Oh, you've got to do a drum solo. No, I'm not doing a drum solo. <laughs> yeah, 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 do a drum solo. I said, no, great, I can't, no, I don't want to do drum solos. Tozy's drum kit? It's like, no, can't do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he, he kept on, and she got his way in the end, so we worked out the little, only two and a half minute drum thing. 
So we did a uh, instrumental version of Kill, Kill the King, then a, a short drum solo, keeping the tempo up and then coming out. And that, that, that's all we did. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, but um, then we played Hard Rock Hell with, with Graham. I, I put some videos up. And playing Eyes of the World with Graham Bonnet on Cozy's kit. That's it. Mm. That's it. Now you're top of your bucket list. Looking over off. those toms, Graham, Graham would turn around and come to the, the kit and he would either pull a face, smile at me or or whatever. And I'm just thinking, is this real? <laughs> <laughs> Am I dreaming this? It's just, it, you know, he'd, he'd jump up on the riser when we'd be playing lots in Hollywood and he'd be, he'd, be, he'd be singing to me and I'd be doing the harmonies and, and he'd be hitting the cymbals. And I'm just thinking, this is insane. <laughs> just like, what? How did this happen? You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, so how did it happen? How did it? How did it? Well, uh, let me think now. Let me think. How did it happen? Um, you know, Carl Sentence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, Carl's in Nazareth at the moment, right? I've known Carl for probably thirty odd years, and I was doing something with like a, a Deep Purple tribute band, friends of mine. They asked me to do it, so I did that. So then we were up in the Midlands in the, in the Robin, so I was with, with Ian and Carl, Ian is a guitar player. I said, let's do a rainbow thing, you know. And Carl said, yeah, I'll do it. So okay. I had Cozy's kitten as well, so I picked the set, and we did a couple of gigs, and it was it sounded just phenomenal. Mm. Um, and I had a phone call from, from an agent. I said, um, I'm thinking of bringing Graham over. Would you, would you like to be his backing man? <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> well, <basically, Nah. laughs> that's how it started. So we, we did a British tour, included Hard Rock Hell. Um, just phenomenal. Yeah. Spend, you know, time with, with him and sit, playing those songs. Just insane. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, highlight of my career. Just like, you know, I'd be at Donington at 15, just staring at the stage, looking at Cozy's kit, but, you know, listening to Graham's voice, those songs. And I'm like, one day I want to play Donington, you know, which we yeah. did then, you know, and to, to play with, with Graham, these songs. And I've mm. done it, I'm just like, I don't care if I've done, done anything, anything else. <laughs> you know. That's not likely, but... Well, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, uh, I know what you mean, yeah. You know, if, if it ends tomorrow, uh, it, it's like, wow. Yeah, yeah. I've done, I've achieved my, my dreams, basically. Yeah, oh, but, awesome. know, yeah we, you know, we haven't earned millions of pounds from it. But, you know, who has? Yeah, yeah. Pounds, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And nowadays you've got no chance. Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's really tough. You know? All these musicians, they've all got two or three jobs on the side, and yeah. well, the musician is the musicianship yeah. is the side job, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we were talking to Dane Campbell about it, weren't we? And uh, oh, what a lovely fella! Yeah, he's a great yeah. guy, isn't he? Lovely fella, lovely he fella. Is, yeah. Well, all us Welsh people are lovely, mate. Yeah, well, yeah. So yeah. I, I said I come from work, and I, I said to the missus, I can't wait. I've been really looking forward to this. I said because I I love talking to the Welsh. She's as great. You can't beat her. <laughs> Hey, uh, as a as a um, a side note, and carrying on from that from that agent who got me the gig with Graham, the same agent, right? He kind of emailed me and he said, um, "Well, well, do you fancy putting a band together for Dave Bickler, the original singer from Survivor?" Yeah. Okay, so we did a tour with Dave Bickler, and we no were way. playing "Eye of the Tiger" and "Burning Heart" and all those classic Survivor songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so I, I put a band together. I got Jim from FM guitar player. Yeah, yeah. Um, Glenn from Santa Man, Dominic and Marco from um, Santa Man as well. And I remember the first gig we did. It was fantastic because Jim turned around and looked at me, and he just started going. I know. We were playing Eye of the Bloody Tiger with with Dave Bickler. I share. What? <laughs> what? You know, um, we had we headlined the um, it was a the Butlins could have been Winter's End or Hard Rock L type of thing down in Butlins, like two thousand people, maybe. Yeah, insane. You know, we come yeah. off. 
Did we, did we just play Eye of the Tiger and Burning Heart with like Dave Bittler? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely mental. Brilliant. Yeah, that's cool, man. How did you end up doing the ACDC videos then? Um, it was a phone call from uh, Ray Jones, um, bass player. You know, Ray plays with Son of Man and Son of Man and Sassafras. And um, Ray's brother, um, Dick Jones, has been working with ACDC since Back in Black. Okay. Well, as, okay. as a drum tech. And I remember I was, I was sat in here in the kitchen and my phone went and I didn't recognise the number as a Cardiff number. And I said, I'm not answering that. And then he was like, oh, it's Ray ringing now on his mobile. So I went, hey, Ray. So are you sitting down? Yeah, what's the matter? Somebody died? No, no, no. He said, <laughs> my, my brother just called me and, you know, said that um, ACDC are in town in London this weekend shooting two videos and, and Bill is not there. And I was like, yeah. And he said, well, are you available tomorrow to go up and would you like to do it? He said, well, <laughs> Again, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you want me to... Go and do two videos this is easy, this is easy tomorrow. Yeah, if you want and if you're available. And my missus was going. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, Is this are you pulling my leg? Ray he said, No, 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 my brother will call you now. And I I would met Dickie a few years prior to that. So his brother rang me ten minutes later. And I said, Is this legit now, Dickie? He said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. I said, So do, do they know You've asked me? He said, oh, yeah, we'd be talking about you today. So Angus said, yeah, send him up. Right, okay. So I left at 7 o'clock the next morning. Yeah. Drum kit in the back, and uh, off I went. Ah. You know? So That's it was good. literally like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably it was like, the best way. Like winning the bloody lottery. Yeah, yeah. Pound. Yeah, <laughs> without the million pound on it. Yeah, it's like, what would you rather? Do those two videos with ACDC or win the lottery? If you won the lottery, hundred million quid, you couldn't buy that. You couldn't no, buy no. That. So, yeah, so. that's it, isn't it? But Not yeah, it, it, they were. Um, I I got there, I met uh, met Dicky at ten o'clock in the morning, loaded the kit up in in the green screen room for it was play ball. Just set the kit up, and he said, "Right, I'll take up the dressing room." I said, "What their dressing room?" Yeah. I said, do you want me to go somewhere else? Said, no, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, there's still like coffee machines in there and food and stuff. And, and then in they walked with the yeah, wife yeah. girlfriends and they were lovely, lovely. Oh, thank Bob, thanks for doing this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Angus's missus was like making me coffee and I'd sit down and it's like, oh yeah, no worries. Fantastic. So, oh, we still okay. live in Holland? They were, yeah, I think so. Yeah. They were fantastic. So friendly, so yeah. nice. Really like down to earth and normal. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, that's the yeah. best way, really, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you're obviously exactly. well thought of within the circuit, I guess. I mean, for these people well, to be calling you up, you know. Yeah, but it's all it's only who you know. This. Yeah, I know that. But about the drummers that could have done it. Yeah. But I was lucky enough to have the call. Um, yeah, yeah, I know that, but they obviously think you know you're obviously very highly thought of. Like I said, there's loads of other drummers they can call, but they call you, you know? Well, maybe there was loads of other drummers that was unavailable. Or they were like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Don't, don't put yourself down, mate. Yeah, don't be like that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that I, that's how I, you know, I, I yeah. don't see it any other way, really. It's just like, well, I was very lucky to get the call, and yeah, we all yeah. got on very well. Yeah. You know, and um, we had a great laugh for the weekend. Who's the tallest? Brian or Angus? Brian's a bit taller than Angus, isn't he? Is that with his heels on, though? <laughs> Brian had a lovely pair of cowboy boots on, and I said, they're nice, Brian. You know, because I got loads of cowboy I love my cowboy boots as well. And, uh, I, yeah, yeah, you're really good, like, you know, I, I couldn't do it, can't do the accent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was showing me um, pictures of his cars on his laptop. Oh, he loves oh, his really? mugless, doesn't he, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we we were just like chin wagging about stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's hanging out like. Um, and to be honest, with you 
I just I treated them as normal people. Well, they are um, normal people, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I did, I, you know, I was talking to them like I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, that's the way they wanted to be treated anyway. They mm. wouldn't, you know, I think, oh, my God, you know. So I just thought, just, just be normal. Yeah. yeah. Normal? yeah. So we were normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we had a great laugh. Brilliant. Yeah, well, to be honest, that's the way I treat everybody. I mean, I treat everybody the same, <laughs> to be honest, you know. We're all just people. I mean, it doesn't matter if you've got a hundred million in a bank or if you've got one pound in a bank. Yeah, we're all the same, like you know. Yeah. We all have to eat and breathe, and we all sleep. You know, we're we're all the same, mate. It's not. I don't really put anybody on a pedestal, to be honest. Yeah, yeah right. whereas I whereas I'm completely different. Yeah, David's completely the opposite. I, I'm a proper fanboy. I, I was the same. I when we come and see. Um, back in Evans, so um, myself and Andrew Jones, we came down and um, and the missus drove, and we came down to watch you guys. I, I, it might have been in the Globe, in Cardiff. Right? Yeah, it was an amazing night, and because um, I had a drumstick off you and everything, and Andrew was laughing at me because I was running around like a school kid. Well, I had a wicked I've, night. I've known Andrew for a long time, and yeah. he came, he's like he's thinking, well, it's only Bob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Oh, yeah. It was such a good night, though. It was a really, really good night. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a good night. Yeah, and I've seen you again. I, I've seen so I've seen you in Son of Man maybe twice. And then for back in Evans, I think I've probably seen you maybe three or four times because I was going to go to the Patriot, but we were down Sound Bay, and um, so we couldn't make it up to the Patriot. But, you know, luckily now you've rescheduled it to June, so I'm hoping we're, we're free for June now and come up and see yeah. you in June. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'll have to give Andrew a shout and see if he's available, and we'll we'll come up and have a couple of yeah. beers with him. Yeah. What um, talking about your improvisation a little bit then? How do you find playing with Chris? Ah, uh, easy. Yeah. Yeah, we fit like a glove. All right. Okay. We 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 very he would agree with this as well, but we we very much the same type of musicians. Yeah. With our respective instruments. We we both play off the cuff. We both yeah, play yeah. off each other. Yeah. And the bizarre thing is, we can both hit particular phrases or patterns at the same time without even telling you know each other about it. And then we just look at each other and go, <laughs> and we just <laughs> think, you know, it's it's bizarre. And, okay. Um, the first time, first time I met him, was oh god. Might have been fifteen years ago, I think. Um, and he was about sixteen playing his guitar. And I was like, "Whoa!" I, you know, you know when somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. Yeah. And he he had it like, and um, my sister said to me, "Oh, I work with someone whose whose son is Chris Buckley plays guitar." And he, she sent me a video. She said, "Oh, it's that guy I met." And his mother said, "Oh, I work with with someone whose brother." plays in man and whatnot. Yeah. And he went, Oh, that's that bloke I met. Yeah. So I invited him down and we had a had a jam in the conservatory and um he was just fantastic. So I got him involved with what I was doing with man and the early son of man demos and stuff, you know. Okay. Yeah. Um and he played some gigs with Son of Man at the time and then Buck and Evans was home. So then he asked me to, to do that. But yeah, yeah. We, we musically we get on really well mm. yeah you know yeah. i kind of know what he's going to do he knows kind of what i'm going to do and like i said earlier we just do the same thing at the same time yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people think we may like rehearse that we the shit out of that no it's off the top of our heads like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's know, cool man sometimes it it may not work other times it just you know yeah don't yeah. Great. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, we, we fit together like like hand in glove with you know musically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've obviously known him for a few a few years then. Yeah. You know. Yeah, like I said, about since he was sixteen, I think. 17. Yeah. As old as you know, twenty seven, twenty eight. He's thirty. I'd say he's probably thirty, 30 now. Is he thirty yeah. now? Is he? Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's getting old. Getting old now. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be catching us up. <laughs> yeah. So what about did you know Sally Ann before Buck and Evans then or did you uh, it... no. No? No. What a voice. 
Yeah, amazing, yeah. Staggering voice. Yeah, incredible, yeah. Staggering voice, yeah. I mean, when we did that album, that was all uh, kind of live. It was live, the bass and drums were live, and then it was like, the bass could, you know, tidy it up. But I, I remember playing the drums all the way through. There was no overdubs on it. He didn't want a click track. Because mm. I normally use a click track so I can kind of build and kind of repair and change. So I literally had to play these through. If I want to want with something, I have to do it all again. So, but it, oh, you know, right. one, one takes with no click track. Yeah, yeah. Straight off the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I mean, you know, it, it works. Yeah. But it, it doesn't, it didn't give me the luxury of being able to, you know, change the parts if I wasn't happy with a certain bit of the song, you know? Yeah. yeah. Not so much anyway. You know, when, when you've got a click track, everything's regimented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, down on a grid so you can kind of just chop and, and move and cut and paste and, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a quick way of doing it too. Yeah, yeah. it is, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. You know, as, like I said, as you get older, you just get lazy sometimes. <laughs> it's like, well, well, that verse was really good. Just copy and paste and drag it into that yeah, second yeah. verse then. So you don't see me doing it again. Yeah, that's know? it, innit? You know, you can hide yeah. all your mistakes, because, can you? Yeah, yeah, sometimes if you, you do a first great verse and then you go and do the second verse or something and then you may mess up in the second verse and then when she starts missing a couple of things, your head, your head goes and like, yeah. oh, you know, leave it for today. Come yeah, back yeah, fresh yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. You know. Ah, good. cool, man. Good. So you played in um, in Asia as well. So you've done a like a an acoustic. So yeah. Playing acoustic drums was that was that a full acoustic set they were playing then? Was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, John and Jeff had a studio in Ask um, local studios, and I and I got to know them, and uh, we got on really well. They, they were at such a scream. I see Jeff now and again anyway, you know, I've been to him and stuff, but uh, we used to see him pretty much every weekend. And then they said to me, oh, what are you doing like uh, Fortnite Saturday? He said, do, do you want to come to Germany and do an acoustic gig? Yeah, right, yeah. So <laughs> they, they gave me a tape to listen to and get the songs and stuff. So I did, we did congas, tambourine, backing vocals and stuff like that, you know. But yeah, again, it was, it was, Fantastic. Yeah. And um, it was bizarre, basically. And then Jeff had his piano solos, and then he started playing video Kill the Radio Star. And I was like, because <laughs> what a song that is. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It is, but he's playing it. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I, I got video of him playing it on my piano just at the corner. He came he came in the house, and uh, I said, Play it on, play video call really star for me, Jeff. Show me how to do it. So I filmed him and he was sat there playing it. And he, he had a comedy face on. He'd go, dee -dee -dee -ding, and he'd grin. Dee -dee -dee -ding. <laughs> it's, it's quite funny. So yeah, uh, that was uh, that was fantastic. Now, I think John's living in Las Vegas. Oh, okay. Oh, is he? he go, yeah, he goes out with um, Asia, Asia featuring John Payne. Oh, oh right. Okay. What a character he is. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Hell, hell of a laugh. And what a great writer and great vocalist. You know? Yeah, yeah. And we, we used to look after his um his African grey parrot, Trevor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'd have Trevor for a week if he went away. So uh, Is that difficult? Would he show off? The, the parrot, parrot, I mean. Oh, oh John. No, no, the parrot. <laughs> Trevor was fantastic. I got video of him. I videoed Trevor. He's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, because they get really attached to their owners, don't oh, they? Oh, he's... Trevor was brilliant. Yeah, I mean... John loved animals. Um, he had a dog called Hartley. Oh, no, Huntley. Huntley, sorry. And a, uh, a goat called Colin. A goat. <laughs> yeah. Colin. Yeah, yeah surprised though, because parrots, you know, because they can get quite miserable, really, if their owners uh, go away for a bit. Yeah, we, we made a fuss of him. Yeah. My wife and I love animals as well, so we, we looked after them. You know? Ah, cool. Yeah. Have you got any pets yourself? No, not since the kids arrived. <laughs> since they arrived or since they left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Lewis, Lewis will be 17 this year. He, he, was, uh, will, be, he will be 21. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. 
And the orchids will be leaving. I'd have a dog, but uh, I couldn't be doing picking up the, the mess, to be honest with you. Yeah, do you know what it is? It's like having another kid, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're harder than kids. Yeah, they are. Yes. I mean, we've yeah. done hard about getting another dog, because both my dogs are gone now. And, and it's like, do I really want a dog? You know, it's like, I love dogs, but I, do I really want another one? Mm. You know, it's such a commitment. Mm. Yeah, oh, I wouldn't, problem, be, right? wouldn't be without mine now. She's awesome. She's hard enough that? having a budget. I got a, I got a, I got a little, um, she's like a, a sprudel, so she's a spring across with a poodle. Um, oh. But she's she's definitely my dog, you know. She sleeps on my legs and cutches me, and when I come in from work, she was going bananas now when I come in. So, um, yeah, she gets more of my attention than the wife does, unfortunately. Well, it's probably fortunate for the missus, to be honest, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's um, she is awesome, absolutely awesome fudge. Yeah. But I, I used to have staffies, kind of like stronger dogs and stuff like that. You know, I I, I like all that. Yeah, um, once you can, once you can put the bins out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And then I got this one, and um, but she's she's like a little fluff ball, and she's absolutely awesome. She's uh, yeah, my little scrummy, I call her. Yeah, <laughs> animals. <laughs> He's always posting pictures of who he is. Oh, she's lush. But I got I got two rabbits as well. So I yeah, well we we had rabbits. Yeah, they're lush. House rabbits. Yeah. Y yours in the house? They were, but they they started chewing all the skirting boards and stuff. So the missus made me uh, get a hutch and put them out the back. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Locking them up in jail now, are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They got a nice big run, and the, the garden is really well sort of. Um, protected or whatever i can't think what the word is but they so they can have a run of the garden as well yeah. but i've got to be careful because we've replaced all the grass with astral turf and oh. i just need to make sure that it's not poisonous to them before i let them run around on the astral turf they're both yeah, they like that they've been trying to eat that i was thinking oh, that's not good yeah yeah, 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 yeah they're they're holes in it anyway yeah <laughs> i know but the, the dog's awesome with them she she tries to climb in the hutch and hoovers up all their poo. I don't know what it is with dogs and poo. They love a bit of poo, don't they? Yeah. So she likes rabbit poo. I don't know why, but... Um... We send her around my house and my fucking budgie. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, we had two budgies years ago, too. Yeah? Two budgies. We used to have two rabbits. Yeah. I got a budgie now. Look after people's rats. We used to look after people's hamsters. The rats were awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those rats, absolutely awesome. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine, like Jinx, used to have rats. Oh man, fantastic! Yeah, they sit on your neck and stuff, don't they? Mm. They stay there for what hours. Are we talking about animals and pets? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard a little story earlier, going back to your granddad then, because he gave you your first mm -hmm. drum kit. He was actually a Spitfire mechanic in the war. Yeah, he was. Yeah, um, Spitfires. Uh, tempests, okay, yeah, and probably hurricanes as well. Yeah, uh, you know they had loads of hurricanes. Yeah, yeah. You know what a tempest is? Yeah. You do, right? Yeah. Well, the tempest came in later on in the war. It was the fastest plane they had. Yeah. Mm. So um, and I've I've got a picture of of him and the crew and the pilot stood in front of a tempest, with my mother's name on the um bottom cowling. That he oh, painted right. on there, yeah. Patricia. And the bizarre thing is, I, I I found a Tempest group on Facebook. I posted the, these pictures up, and they loved the pictures. And and then I I had people saying, "That's Flight Officer Jimmy James." No way. Uh, that's Squadron Two Six Two or whatever. I can't remember this one. But he said that's this picture was taken in whatever Osnabrück, or this one was in Germany in nineteen forty five. What? So then I had I had the history of the plane. I and someone sent me extra photographs of the plane. Oh right, okay. I even knew when it got scrapped, where it was flown, and I actually found on YouTube combat footage of Jimmy James flying the Tempest, shooting targets. Oh yeah. Really, really bad and grainy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you couldn't make a lot of stuff out, but, but it was so emotional seeing this. Knowing that that was the plane with Patricia on it, and my, yeah. my grandch worked on flying in combat. That's and amazing. Yeah. Man. And then I got a friend of mine, um, Paul Boschen, who who's an incredible guy building um, 
models, aircrafts, and Second World War stuff. And he built me a Tempest with with basically a replica of the photograph with uh, the guy stood in front of it. All right. And so it's basically it's the photograph pressure on the sides, and my son's going in his bedroom. Oh, so nice. it's like, whoa. Yeah. Did he 3D print it? Well, someone else posted it. No, no, it's, it's a proper kit model. Basically. Oh, right, okay. Kit model. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So he's built it and painted it and put the figures there, and it's on, on some turf. It's just fantastic. And um, someone then posted an incredible quality picture of the same the same image. Yeah. It's like, what's this? And basically, it was on the front cover of a modeler's pamphlet in Australia about <laughs> 15, 20 years ago. Um, with a little history in there of where the photos were taken and who they were. Yeah. Okay. And what had happened, they'd have official photographers and they would take photographs of the crew in various, you know, they'd all sat over a car, they were sat they were in front of the Tempest. So then they'd dish these out to the crew and they'd take them home. So that's how my granddad had them. But I was, was all crumpled and yellow and cracked. But yeah. this one was perfect. And on the front cover of this magazine. So I had, yeah. a, I had a really good quality version of it. Then I colorized it. And it's just incredible. Yeah. I get printed out, you know. But I learned so much about the about the plane and where he mm. was. He was in um, the tactical air force, so he wasn't okay. just based over in Britain. He was based in Tangmere first, and then he went over to Europe six days after the D-Day invasion. So he basically moved out with the with the aircraft, supporting the troops as they went into France and Germany. Ah, oh, right. Mm. So it was a ta- Royal Tactical Air Force. That's what yeah. Oh, that's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. And did he ride motorbikes then? Um, yeah, he had a bike. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of those old engineers, they all rode motorbikes, didn't they? Yeah, he had a motorbike. Um, and he was, I remember him saying, he used to, oh God, when he used to pick my nan up from Woolworths, he used to start the car up, he'd warm the car up for 10 minutes. So what are you doing then? He said, I couldn't start a Spitfire and then they would just take off. You've got to warm it up. <laughs> <laughs> in case it would stall, you know. Yeah. I said, "Yeah, but we're not going to fall, are we? We don't, you know, because yeah. it was inbred in him, you know what I mean?" Yeah. Because when yeah, they did those, ring those scramble bells, he'd have to run out, get the engine started, make sure everything's right, you know. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, Yeah, that's crazy. Because well, I do that to be honest with my motorbike. I mean, I start my car and I just drive off, but with my bike, I always let it warm up, you know. Yeah. Well, I try and do that with Harley Davidson, but it's so loud, it rattles all the windows in the street. Yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah. That's not a real motorbike, though, is it? <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> of course it is. It's black, and, it, and it makes hell of a, hell of a racket. Yeah, well, the Ducati that used to do that. <laughs> is, is your Ducati a V-twin? Probably, isn't it? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah, back in, when I had it back in the day, yeah. Well, what do you ride now? Um, I've got a Honda now, CB thousand R. Oh yeah, you know the new ones. Oh. Just uh, Ali Davidson, though, is it? No, I I, can't, I just can't get on with them, mate. To be honest, Ali Davidson's. <laughs> Have you ever tried to ride one though? No, I don't want to either. I just, <laughs> I just look at them and I'm like, you know, they make all that noise and they do like 60, 80 mile an hour. So. No, they don't. They do. <laughs> Why do you want to go faster than eighty miles an hour on a bike? Because it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got caught up in Brecon once on my Ducati. I was on my Ducati, actually. I'll tell you a story now. There was a load of us. We were all up in the Brecon Beacons. And we came around this corner. And there, was, there must have been about eight or nine of us. Except all on bikes. And there was this cop car parked on the side in the corner. In the corner. It was like in a, in a, um, a gateway, you know. So we all come past. And my mate looked at me. And I, like, I was just... Didn't think anything of it. But there was this guy on this Thunder Ace Thousand then. This is going back a few years. A brand spanking new Thunder Ace Thousand. And he just decided to go. So I thought, oh, fuck it. I'm going to go with him. So I went I went straight after him. And the next thing you know, this fucking cop is chasing us down through the Breck of Beacons. And there's, next thing we know now, this police coming the other way as well. Because we weren't going to stop, or we weren't, you know, we, we never really saw him, to be honest, until it was too late. Then they had a helicopter out as well, because we were really? flying. <laughs> <laughs> so then when we eventually stopped, he, 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 he said, right, you stay by there. I want to talk to this guy first, because he knew this guy on this Sunday's Thousand, because apparently he'd run somebody over in Abergavenny a couple of weeks before. 
Yeah, that's so, a terrible you guys writing these sports bikes like your loonies. I know. <laughs> you, don't, you don't get it with us. <laughs> so he it's said to this wrong. guy, this guy on the Sunrise, this uh, this guy on the Sunrise Thousand tried to bribe him then, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I have nothing to do with this. I just, I'm like, just, I'm just staying by, I'm staying out of it because this guy, this copper said, like, I know you from out of any other week, and he's like, oh, I'll give you hundred quid if you like. To the blind eye or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 forget it, forget it. Because there's now, by now, there's police bikes that have come the other way. You know, the helicopter's over and gone. And then he came to me and he said, Right, your turn. And I was like, Right, go on. He said, Jump in a car. He said, You were doing 145 mile an hour down there then. I said, no, I wasn't. He said, Yes, you were. I said, I wasn't. And he said, this this motorbike cop that would come the other way then. I said, do me a favour, mate. I said, he reckons I was doing 145 mile an hour on my Ducati. Can you take it up there and see if you can do, do 145 mile an hour on it, right? Right, I, I, did he or not? No, he didn't. No, he's like, he said, if you can do 145 mile an hour on that, I wouldn't want to ride it. <laughs> right? Because <laughs> it was an old 900 Super Sport, but it was an Italian import, see? So I said, look, I'm not, I, I, I wasn't doing 145 miles. He said, yes, you were. I got it on video, blah, 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 blah. I said, that's when you were trying to catch me up. You were doing 145 miles an hour. So we went to court anyway, and I pleaded not guilty. And then it got through, it got postponed because I pleaded not guilty. Then he went back again. I pleaded not guilty again. I said, I'm not pleading guilty to do 145 miles. Cause I would have got like a two year ban, you know? Mm. And because uh, we're doing it in the 60s, so it's more than double the speed limit. And then the third time he was due to go to court, the copper went down with cancer of the colon. Oh. So we went back to court and they said, oh, we'll just do a deal with you and we'll do a deal with you for 99 mile an hour. You get a three month ban and I'll be it. You'll be a 400 quid fine or whatever. I said, I'll take 99 mile an hour all day, every day, like, you know. So I was lucky <laughs> that the copper was unlucky, really. Yeah. You know, but yeah, 140, I wasn't doing 145, I don't think. I was doing 144. That <laughs> might have been doing 150. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like when you guys go and, you know, vroom, past me, I just shake my head. Like, yeah, I don't do that anymore. I'm too old for that now. You know, I'm plod plodding along, 60 mile hour, a beautiful day, you know, listening to my music, whatever. Yeah. And, uh, vroom! <laughs> <laughs> they do, they give you a fright, man. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Do you I ever mean, go I, like, uh, like you know, on like a a trek and with a tent and stuff like that? Do you ever do any of those sort of things? No, I never seem to find the bloody time. To be honest, mm. it was like, you know, you need at least a few days of doing nothing. Yeah. And even though we're like Easter holidays, I'm gonna check my diary what I'm doing tomorrow. You know, we're out there, you're everywhere doing stuff, and it's like, you know. Next week I'm away, do two days rehearsal and stuff. Mm. Um, I was rehearsing last night. Yeah. So. I'll be honest, I got that bike there. Well, I got two bikes. I got an old Ninja as well, 600 Ninja. But I don't, I very rarely ride them anymore. Like, you know, I got that Honda, there's a big naked, big naked bike. So you don't really go fast on it anyway. You do like 100 mile an hour and the wind's blowing you off it. And then the the ninja I got, I don't really ride it because I get off it and I'm all aches and pains, you know. Mm. And I only ride it like twelve k or something, and it's like, oh god, I wish I never got on it now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I love it when it's about thirty degrees, and I can just go out and just plod for hours on end with my music yeah. in a nice, comfortable position. Mm. Just phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I find that with my naked, with well, that Honda I got, yeah. I love it. It's probably one of the most comfortable bikes I've ever had, to be honest. You know, you just sit there. Yeah. It's like, it's, pro yeah. it's probably a lot like riding a Harley, but it's a lot smoother, you know? You just sit there, you it's ride it, and it's... <laughs> well, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't go wrong with all the Honda engine, like. <laughs> no, you can't. No, I, I passed my test on a uh, Honda 125, a CM125. All oh, right, yeah. My first bike was a Yamaha uh, uh, DT50. Uh, oh, I was just going to say that. My first official first motorbike was also a DT50. I had it for my 16th birthday. I loved, absolutely loved it. Yeah, I did too as well, mine. But uh, we used to go everywhere on it, from Cumbran 
both uh, call. I bet know. you did the same as me. Upgraded the front sprocket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Took the baffles out. 11, 11 tooth to 14 tooth, so you could get an extra couple of mile hour on the end of yeah, it. Yeah, that's it. Do you cook the exhaust? Exhaust, I'll pour pepper in it, set it on fire. We're yeah. All like, yes, yeah, we've all done it, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, we're all there. We're all there. <laughs> We got, we got nearly me and my mate. We were down in Porth Call and we were messing around with these buses because when we were going like on the flat, we could do like 50, 60 mile an hour on the flat because you know we had this. But when we got to the hills, we were fucked, right? So we were messing around with these coaches and we kept slowing these coaches down all the time. So we're coming back from Porth Call now and it was the same two coaches that we'd been messing around with on the way. So we started coming up this hill. On these DT fifties, me and my mate, because my mate had one. I had a black one. And my oh, mate yeah. Had yeah, and we're going up this hill, and this third, the first coach overtook us, and then the second coach came up behind us, and they squashed us together, and we both fell off on the side of the road. <laughs> 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 but you know, when you're like sixteen, when well, way back when, what was that? How many years ago was that? I was like forty years ago. You know, yeah. you don't think anything of it. You're like, you like, you think you're bulletproof, don't you? Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like. Well, I, I used to go in all weather. I used to go in the snow. Well, I used to well, ride mine everywhere. I used to ride it to work. Yeah, snow, I, rain, you know. terrible. I'm, like, I'd be chivalrous. But I wouldn't I won't go out on the bike now in the rain at all. No, I don't no like chance. that. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like the alley getting wet. No, I don't I like don't my bikes getting no. wet either. No to way. To be honest. I'm way past um, that. I mean, I used to ride my bike everywhere. I never had a car, so I had to use the bike, you know? And I used to go drinking up the lamb and all sorts of stuff on it. And but always in the rain, in the snow, in the ice, you're always out. Like I said, when you're a kid, you're you're indestructible. But when I don't have an XT five hundred now, but uh, they they cost a fortune. Yeah, yeah, I saw one of them actually for sale not long ago over here. Oh, I love uh, the XT five hundreds. Yeah, with the gold wheels. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. XT in, on the tank, yeah. black and white tank, and XT in red. Oh, the LC 500s, black LC 500s, the old ones, 1981. Oh, right, yeah. When the first LCs came out. Yeah. I have a set of chrome microns on it. And the yeah, yeah, yeah. Broke. <sighs> We're just rattling on now about bikes. <laughs> it, went, it went from music to pets to bikes. Oh, God. I don't know. <laughs> oh, what you got coming up, mate? Anything? Well, the rehearsals next week with ATAC and then uh, the gig, May the 1st, Sunday, May the 1st in Bradstock. That's the first gig. Are you going to be releasing any music? There will be an album at some point, yeah. Um, like I said, I'll know, I'll know a lot more probably in the rehearsals when we talk about what's going on and things like that, you know. All right, cool. So, um, I, did, I did one, one track because the album was already done before I got involved. Okay. Okay. Basically, apart from one song. So I, I went and recorded my drum parts um, for that one song, which, which will be on it. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. good. I really like it. It's just like, you know, 73, 74 era purple. Okay. The Glenn Hughes, like that type yeah. of, it's that type of vibe, you know? Yeah. You must have heard the song. You must have seen the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have a sense of it though. Yeah, I really like it. It's great. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, I don't know. I, I've written down the name of the vocalist. I'm not sure of him, but I, I like his voice as well. He's got a great voice. Lee Small. Yeah, he's got a really good voice, hasn't he? Well, he's a bass player in the suite at the moment. Okay. And they're playing at Steelhouse this year. Have they? Or, or no. Planet Rock. Planet Rock, they're playing. Planet Rock. I was going to say no. Yeah, yeah. yeah Planet yeah. Rock, they're playing. It was front of them. Who was singing for the suite? The front, yeah. uh, Paul Lanzi. Okay. Another, another friend of mine who's, who did the Cozy Bash for me. Okay. I keep so, seeing them pop up everywhere. I'm thinking, who the fuck's singing for them? <laughs> it's like... Oh, they're, they're amazing. Like, if you've never seen it, you're just like, what? It's like listening to the record. Yeah, really? Oh, cool. Oh, staggeringly good. My mate Lee, he saw them in London a few years ago. He said it's the best gig he's ever seen in his life. He said he just couldn't believe it. Ah, oh, right, okay. You know, oh, look yeah. forward to that, yeah. yeah. Talk about ACDC cover bands then. Have you ever seen a band called Live Wire? Yeah, I, I played with them. Have you played with them, have you? I yeah, saw yeah. them a couple of years ago in Holland. They were fucking brilliant, mate. 
Yes, I know I know them all very well. I've I, I got up and played uh, half a dozen songs of them in certain, certain gigs they've done. Yeah. Um, in fact, I recommended Podge, the singer, for the gig. Okay. Because well, uh, he was an old mate of mine, and um, he said he was going to give up. And then I, I rang him up. I said, Live Violet for a singer. I said, you need to do it. Because mm. they went, do two sets, don't they? Yeah, so I, so, so I rang, um, rang one of the boys in the band and said, this is the guy you need. All right, does he do the Geordie bit? Uh, he does, he's, he's Brian. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they do two sets. When I saw them, they did two sets. They did like 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, depending if, depend if they got a Bond Scott guy. Oh, right, okay. You know, but yeah. um, Dirty DC, they have got a Bond Scott guy, but he lives in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. So now and again, he comes over. I haven't met him yet, and I haven't done a gig with him yet. Um, that's probably on the cards at some point. Yeah, mm. yeah. You know. Yeah, it's got that life way. But I, like I really enjoyed it. It was, yeah, it was yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I saw them. I I was really impressed. I was like, well, you know, because they did the two split shows as well. Well, the split show as well. They did the show with Bon and then they did the show with Brian. And it was like, mm. this is just fucking amazing. This, mm. What an act. Well, the thing is, they, they try and get the sound right. Yeah. You shut your eyes, the sound is there. Yeah. And if they're all playing the correct parts and got the, the correct tempo, it's, it's very accurate then, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah. that's what these tribute bands try to do. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, they were yeah. good. They, I was really yeah. impressed, to be honest. I've not seen Because I said ACDC are on my bucket list, and I've, I, um, I did see a band called ADHD up the oh. Dragonfly. They were a good laugh, mine. They were all right. <laughs> Bit of fun. <laughs> You've never <laughs> seen them, have you? Them. Never seen DC. I've never ever seen ACDC. No, they're on my bucket list. Never seen them. Donnie's an 81. Yeah. I can see it in my mind now. I, I was right in the middle. I can see it clear as a bell. Mm. About the bell and the bell came down. Brian hit the bell with the, with the sledgehammer. But yeah, so 81 at Donington, 84 at Donington, 91 at Donington, and in the NEC. I uh, forgot what year that was. That was early 90s. Um, that was it really, and then I then I did the videos, and then I went yeah. to we went my wife went to Wembley. Okay. Twenty fifteen. All right, yeah. That was yeah. bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. Well, six months prior to that, you know, I was doing the videos of them, and then I'm watching them then playing Wembley Stadium. Yeah. 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 Like ninety thousand people or whatever it is. Yeah. Bizarre. Yeah. I, I remember I went up on the stage and I'd look around before the, you know, in the afternoon and stuff. And I saw Rosie in the box, inflatables and yeah, yeah. talons and everything. And, um, and I saw them all afterwards. So, oh, right, okay. Yeah, awesome. yeah. It was it was bizarre. But they started yeah. with Rock or Bust. Yeah. They opened, they opened with that and it was like, it was, it was emotional. It was weird, just like, yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, that's cool. Very, 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 very close. Very close to it. Yeah, very close to it. Yeah. yeah. I'm, all, I'm all right with it. You know, I'm not bitter. I'm not bothered. It's like, yeah. It's just, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah, of course, yes. So, so cool. That's awesome. And then you also played with um, Adrian Smith as well for a bit when he yes. did his um, solo band when he had a bit of a hiatus from Iron Maiden. Yeah. Yeah, I was due to see him up in winter's end but my missus won very well so i missed his set because he, he's been touring with Coza, hasn't he? and yeah. um yeah so i missed his set what was i like playing with him is that cool yeah it was one of those moments again where he was like i'm playing like main songs with you smith you know <laughs> bizarre again that yeah. was from a recommendation he, he phoned my house no oh, way did he hi he phoned my house um, Andy Barnett gave you my number. Andy Barnett was in FM at the time. Oh, right, yeah. And uh, age, age, fantastic bloke, really down to earth. So he, he rang the house and um, he sent me a tape. I learned the tape. I went up and auditioned and got the gig. Awesome. Right. And, uh, you know, we ended up staying at his house and whatnot and all his gold and platinum records down the wall. It's like, what? <laughs> it's a different world, you know. <laughs> He's a great bloke. He's down, really down to earth, and you know, 
Um, yeah, uh, by Maiden, well, so. I think most of them are the, the Iron Maiden guys, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, you see, you know, when they usually play, I usually go and see them, you know, whether it's in Cardiff. But a couple of years ago, me and the wife went up to the O2. We had a, we had a night out up there and they, they looked after us. It was an after show party. It was fantastic. Oh, awesome. yeah. You get back to the hotel lab at three in the morning. Yeah. You know. But yeah, well, you, great, great plug. And we played um, a couple of Maiden songs in the set as well, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, well, he, it wouldn't be an Adrian Smith show without a few I mean it'd songs. Have to, it'd have to be Run to the Hills, wouldn't it? Do you play that? No. No, we did. Can I play with Madness? Yeah. And, uh, oh, I'm going to take my tongue just now. What's the other one he wrote? He wrote loads, but um, uh, Wasted Years. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, yeah. Well, I, I, I said to Rach, I said, you. If I was coming to see you and you didn't play any Maiden songs, I said I wouldn't be very happy. Yeah. yeah. You've got to do some Maiden songs. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah I, I know they did do some Maiden songs up, um, but Winter's End as well, because uh, I saw yeah, a couple of guys the next years. day. Yeah. yeah. No, there's wasted years. Yeah. Yeah, I was <laughs> gutted I missed them, but uh, here we are. He's a great player. Yeah. Tremendous player. You know, underrated. As well, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic blues player. Mm. What well, do you find out with a lot of these guitar players? A lot of them are really underrated, you know? Yeah. I mean, we spoke to a couple and uh, it's like, they're amazing, amazing people and mm. amazing probably, guitar players. Yeah, it's probably the person, you know, like Bruce Dickinson's probably got such a big personality, hasn't he? He's, you know, he probably comes forward more so than the, than the rest of the band, I guess, really, do you know what I mean? So... That's, that's probably what happens, isn't it, in some of these bands where some of the musicians, you know, are a bit quieter and it's because of the personality that comes out from some of the other guys there. Yeah, maybe, maybe. maybe. Try yeah. I mean, because it's, like, it's kind of like Steve Harris as well. He's, he's another big personality in the band, isn't he? And, yeah. you know, he's sort of like, like, you know, he formed it, didn't he? So it's, it's his band, really, I guess. Yeah, age very laid back anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, Murray is as well, isn't he? Yeah, Dave, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, like, he's pretty yeah. chilled yeah. out, isn't he? Yeah, they're both yeah. like, for, for scenes that they both lead guitar players, Yeah, they're, they're not very prominent. I mean, the, um, I was going to say vocally then, it's not fucking vocally, is it? Oh, well, Adrian's a good singer as well. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. But you can, with the guitar players, it's more, pretty much a dueling guitar set with the, with the two guys from Iron Maiden, you know, and they brought a third one in. But... Well, you're Yannick Gers as well, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah stayed, but, didn't he? But the, 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 the main two, the main two guys, and considering they were bringing really that sound for Iron Maiden, they were sort of like set back in the in the show, weren't they? Mm. You know, like I said, you had Bruce up front, and Steve Harris is always playing. He's always everywhere anyway, mm. you know, and they had such a good drummer in, in the old days. It was Clive, obviously. And then they changed it to Nico. And, uh, but, yeah, th those two guys that play the sound were always sort of like, you knew they were there, but you wouldn't really know who they were if you didn't know Iron Maiden. Mm. Clive was um, a fantastic player. Yeah, Clive was, yeah. Brilliant parts on the albums. And Nico's a brilliant player too, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah. Really, really good player. Yeah. Yeah, and he got to play with Sooty. He did. He did, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a character. I remember we went to a, um, an actor show party once. Um, he was, I think, I think it was after a maiden gig and we went to some some studio it was a huge like a Halloween I can't remember something like that and I remember Nico I was uh, probably with Aiden Nico come past and he looked at me and he went I recognise you he said I said what because basically we did a vid the video with Adrian yeah. and they sent the video out to Spain where Maiden were rehearsing and they watched the video so Nico ah. recognised me from the bloody video oh, okay. he was, oh he's a hell of a character yeah yeah that's cool <laughs> that is cool yeah, they were my first ever band I watched. They were Maiden. Back wow. in 1990 when I was four years of age. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <I>, huh? <laughs> yeah, all good yeah, band. All right, yeah. guys. So, got anything new coming out with, um, with Buck and Evans? Any, because well, uh, obviously the album came out in 2018. I know you wanted to. I know you had yeah. some. There was yeah. rumours you had some new material that you were going to play up the Patriot. Yeah, 
I was thinking about that the other day. So we got two songs that are practically finished. There's another one that's uh, on the boil. And um, I'm thinking, well, we need to kind of get and record them and do a video for one of them or something, you know. Mm. And we need to start probably getting together at some point because we got we we headlining the Aberdeen Lady Blues and Rock Festival. Oh, it's a good festival, that is, yeah. Um, that's end of May sometime, I believe. Okay. Oh, okay. It's still all that in the rugby in the rugby club, is it? No, the it's the Met, Metropole. Oh, okay. In the theatre. Oh, right, okay. Um, so then that's the next gig, and I think then we're doing the Patriot end of June. Yeah. And I think we've got a festival in Manchester in uh, in August. Yeah, I read that, yeah. Firestorm, um, isn't it? Firestorm? Yeah, yeah Firestorm. Yeah, Inglorious are up there, I think. Yeah, Wayward Sons and those damn yeah. crows. And so, yeah, yeah so should be a really good weekend, that. Yeah. Yeah, some, yeah something like that, right? Um, yeah, so that, that's that's it off the top of my head, what, what we yeah. got, really. I mean, i got to check my diary. I'll, I'll ask the wife, what do I do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at that's least you keep keeping busy, mate. Yeah, it's good. Well, yeah, uh, it's it's bizarre. You know, you've got to take it day by day, to be honest, because you, you know, I don't know. It's like what you never know what's going to come on the on the end of the telephone. Yeah, yeah. Half the time. Brilliant. You know, getting older, you see, you just don't know where you are. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. But after that, you know, huh. perhaps perhaps you take it for granted all these things because I, I you know i've always done it for you know yeah it's like second nature then 40 odd years of playing mm. live and I, it's like it's probably i was seven when i played in, to people first yeah you know so it's nearly knocking on 50 years so yeah i don't know yeah. i don't know any different i still get nervous man yeah do you? yeah yeah yeah, I get more nervous, you know, playing like if you can see see people. Yeah. They're not gonna look at them in the eye. It's like just look through or look at the back or something. Yeah. You know, you, you just concentrate on what you're doing and um and you, you kinda of put you you gotta put yourself in a in a zone. Yeah, yeah. You know, where you can perform and where yeah. you're comfortable. Without looking around, thinking, "Oh, so and so, oh, you know," and then by the time you thought of that, you like you missed a cue or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, that, that shows you're alive, mate. Yeah. But I, uh, and in the moment, <laughs> you're still alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you if you didn't get nervous and stuff, and you were just doing it every day, it would be mundane, you know, and it would be like. It would be oh, like what what was what was bizarre, when when we did Donington. I wasn't nervous at all. That was like another gig, and I mm. wanted it. I wanted it to be overwhelming. Yeah. I wanted it to be special. I wanted it to be all these things that have built up in these last forty-two years of Monsters of Rock, and it was none of it. Mm. Yeah, but that's probably because you had such high expectations of it. Well, it, it was pissing down the rain. <laughs> that's a bummer. <laughs> Well, that's Donington for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> and uh, the dressing room was like a quarter of a mile away from the stage. Yeah. I didn't even go in the dressing room. I had to get changed on the side of the stage. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and because we, it was everything was so fast. Yeah. It was like on, play, off, scrabble, out, pissing down the rain. And we, 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 it's like, what? We just played Donington. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, all the bosses of rock I've been to, and the sun has been shining, and the bands have been playing, and it's like, it was nothing like that. You know, not yeah. that. It was just, you know, and we were, when we were in the catering tent, and the rain was absolutely pounding down in the middle. I, I saw Adrian, Adrian was there, so yeah. we had a chat, and we were all in it just having some food and some tea and drinks and whatnot. And it was pounding the rain. It was made an headline that night. And I just, I thought, oh, let's go home. 
<laughs> but like I wanted to see Maiden while I was there. Yeah. I, we all just went home because it was just like soaking wet, damp, cold, and we trudged. Me and the wife trudged through all the mud. Yeah. yeah. Our angles. Um, you know, back in the day, it was glorious sunshine, dry mm. field. One day with half a dozen fans. Yeah. One stage. Now there was there's fifty stages, three million bands. Yeah. And a, and a circus and a you know a fairground. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's gone. It's, you know, it takes the mystique away from the show. It's like if you go back to like early Glastonbury, you know, like mid eighties and stuff. That's all it was was a field and a stage. I've never um, been to Glastonbury. But yeah, well, I, if you go back to the eighties, the early, I don't think you know, want to go to Glastonbury. Not now, I expect. No, but go back, I, I, you know. I again, and I just like, oh god, it must be my old age. Like, do I want to go and stand in the field all day? No. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I no. still love it. That's what that's why I like Celo so much because it's it's kind of like got the effect of a of a bigger festival because it's a three day, but it's still quite an intimate festival as well if you know what i mean so there's i think it was about six and a half thousand people went there last year through the weekend mm. but it's still not i, I don't want to get in any bigger do you know what i mean because I, I get to see all the bands and then you get to see people after the shows and stuff we well, you for that you get you're getting darker and darker <laughs> let me turn it like that <laughs> Ah, I, had, I had noticed it was getting a bit dark, and I was thinking, I was thinking, oh, I my sunglasses on now, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, I, 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 I love Steve House. It's such a great event. Yeah, I, I can't stand up all day in the field now. My back goes, you know, it's like oh. I got to take a deck chair, you have Bob, and just have a yeah. chill, and then you go up to see the bands you want to see, and then just go back and have a chill again. No, I, I, if I can get in backstage, I'll just chill backstage all day. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can go and sit down somewhere and just like, you know. Yeah. Now you can watch what you want to watch. In the shelter, out in the way. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> oh, the life of a rock star, I tell you. Well, I don't know, I don't know about that, but it's just like, <laughs> it's just, it's just, as you get older, you just like, your tolerance is that you, you know. Go a bit and like, no, like a moody, grumpy oh. rock star. Rock star. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't drink much, you know, and I'm driving all the time, so yeah. it's like, you know. That's it, isn't it? But you think you'd be miserable bastard. Whose idea was to get him on, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then, we're going to lake it off. Yeah, I, I got to ask you one question. I know you've already answered it, really. But, well, I've um, been having a slug in my um... yeah. Get it, get it down you. So um, obviously, you've played with all these fabulous musicians and some of your idols, like you've said. Yeah. Is there anybody that you haven't played with yet that you would still love to play with? Um, Richie Blackmore. Okay. Because that's basically going back to Rainbow Donnie then, 1980, Down to Earth Tour, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. which is still my favourite guitar player. Um, so, yeah, Richie Blackmore. Um, yeah. I had another bucket list because I did Carl's album, Carl Sentence's album. Yeah. Um, Electric Eye. And I came out about six months ago, I think. And Don Aries keep playing keys on it. Oh, right, okay. As well, so I I, I kind of know Don a little bit anyway, and I've seen him loads of times. But now we're actually on the same record together. Yeah, yeah that's cool. So that's another thing that just blew my mind. You know, me and Don are on the same songs on this bloody album. Yeah. You know, um, and working with Graham back in the day, and now working with Don. <laughs> yeah. Two guys from Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, that's cool. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, cool, man. That's you know, cool. I do the Cozy Bash every year, but we haven't done it for the last two years. Yeah, yeah obviously. COVID, yeah. And um, it was at the, the Memorial Day for Cozy Powell up in Sirencester. We were, I think it was, a, was it the Placken? No, it was after the Placken meeting. A year later, we had a memorial. We just sort of had a catch up and a meal and stuff. And um, we were sat around the table. It was like Tony Martin from Sabbath, Don Airy, Neil Murray, 
again, it still blew my mind. The fact mm. we all sat around the table again, I'm, you know, she's wagging and laughing and stuff. And I thought, if I don't say it now, you know, so I said, basically, I said, I want to do this gig for Cozy. Uh, and um, if I do it, would you guys be interested? Would you, you know? And they said, yeah. Oh, okay. So um, Don's, Don hasn't done it yet, but Tony did it. Yeah. Neil done it twice. So I basically put put the set list together and it ended up being three hours long. So we did the first one, we did like eight rainbow songs, eight of the big, big rainbow songs covering the Dio and Bonnet eras. And then we did the MSG stuff. And the first one with Ted McKenna was playing the drums. So Ted, but Ted sadly died three weeks after that. Oh, okay. The last gig he did. So I had Ted on the drums and Chris Glenn on the bass from the MSG band and Alex Harvey. Um, and then we, had, we did the White Snake set and Neil was on the bass. And then we did the Sabbath stuff with Neil and Tony. And uh, I played the drums for that. So um, that, again, blew my mind. I was playing Sabbath songs with two guys from Black Sabbath. Yeah. But I saw in the boat centre when Cozy was drumming and it, we did Headless Cross and Adam Mundy. Yeah, yeah. And I, I got it on video and I was, at one point I was just looking up playing Adam Mundy and just, I had goosebumps on and I just thought, how did I get here? It was just unreal. Yeah. You know, I'd look to my left and there's Neil and he'd give me a nod and I was like, what? It was just basically stuff I wanted to play with all my heroes from back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the second year we did it, then we did the MSG stuff, and I played the MSG stuff with Chris Glenn. Another bucket list. Yeah. The Buddha Khan album with Cozy. You, you must have heard the Buddha Khan album, yeah. MSG, Buddha Khan. Yeah, yeah. So we picked Armed and Ready, Cry for the Nations, um, Sleeping Dogs Like, Dr. Doctor. And in the afternoon, we did Into the Arena. Okay. <laughs> you know, it just blew my mind. Yeah. And. Um, and I know those songs inside out. I know the fills backwards was like, so I put all the same fills that Cozy played in the style of Cozy and Chris, the bass player, would look over to me and he'd go. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. just, do, you know, and I had the cowbell. Um, my mate's got Cozy's cowbell that Cozy had from Rainbow and Schenker and all that. So I had that on the kit as well. So there was points in the live album with Cozy with it, that cowbell. Yeah. And I would hit it at the same spot and you could see Chris going, <laughs> and it's just like this is insane <laughs> yeah. you get the cowbell playing with, with Chris Glenn it's like wow oh, that's awesome you know so so they, they were ticked off the bucket list yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Playing with, with I used to see all those bands back in the day in the 80s yeah when you know, I was a kid yeah and now I'm playing these songs with these people it's like just on Cozy's kit blew my yeah. mind brilliant so like like I said at the beginning, if I don't do anything else, I've done yeah. it. All. You've done it, yeah, I've, yeah. I've yeah. done what I dreamt of doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice stuff. That's awesome. Amazing. You're a very humble guy, mate. Yeah, nice. very. Oh, I'm not. I'm just normal bloke. I just, you know, I don't think of. Yeah, like I said, you're obviously well respected. You're you're well thought of. So definitely, yeah. You know. Yeah, be some people laughing. No, he's a miserable bastard. Don't <laughs> <laughs> like hell. Well, I, I can moan like Al. If something ain't right, I can say. Hey. <laughs> if it's not right, it's not right, is it? Mm. You know, there's no point pretending it is if it's not. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's true. You know, I want it to sound authentic. Yeah. yeah. You know, like when I had the rainbow thing with, with Graham, I said to the boys, I said, I want it sounding like the Down to Earth tour. Mm. You shut your eyes. It's going to be the same. Yeah. I wanted the same sounds on the keyboards in the same same spot. Ian, the guitar player, you know, he's phenomenal. He's got the same gear as Richie. He sounds like Richie. The same sound, you know, yeah. same style. Um, and of course, I had Cozy's kit playing in, in his style. So the same sound because of the kit. And we had Graham singing. Mm. Yeah. So, like, you listening to it, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Bonkers. Well, let's hope you have a good drink with him when you see him up uh, up the mountain. 
Oh, yeah, I'd love to see him again. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a good laugh, Graham. Yeah. Good laugh. Right, Funny right. guy. Hell of a character. <laughs> All right, well, we'll let you get off because you're getting darker and darker now. <laughs> darker and darker. <laughs> well, it's been nice talking to you, Bob. Yeah, it's been awesome, mate. Lovely I'll, to meet uh, you, and uh, yeah, don't ever pull yourself down, man. I do all the time. You shouldn't. No, don't. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm like, no, 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 no. You know, I can't. Very good. Amazing right. stuff. Cool. I buddy. don't, you know, I just like, I me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I understand. Lucky, right place, right time. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Uh, we speak a lot about that, but and an awful lot of talent as well, but. Obviously. No. This <laughs> can't much... be this much talent and this much luck. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah, work like that. that. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, it does, I suppose, doesn't it? You know. It can, but it, not very often. Uh, you know. I know. It's all about the talent at the end of the day. For sure. To consistently right. being doing it and being called up and yeah, definitely. Sure, it's about the talent. Obviously. No, there's drummers on YouTube that are like six who can play me out of the window. Oh, I bet there is. You know, they but they're only six, and they haven't got yeah. the ex- they haven't got the life experience. So no. How oh, they will have probably. No. Yeah, maybe. Well, not by seven, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right for another year. <laughs> I think I think it's probably because of of YouTube access to material now, like that. Bang. Yeah, yeah. You can slow stuff down. You could see it. Yeah. Back in the day, I'd have a forty-five record and I'd stick it on at maybe thirty-three speed and listen, you know, and try and try and work out Fireball. Yeah. Right. With one bass drum. Yeah. Off a record, and then the first time I met Ian Pace, I said. I got a bone to pick with you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I learned fireball with one foot. My foot would last for 30 seconds before my leg collapsed. <laughs> I said, and then I saw a video of you playing it and your you roadie brought out another bass drum and he yeah. laughed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he laughed. Right, I'm definitely off. All right, back. All yeah. right, nice to meet you, Bob. I, I can talk all night now. I got some more Jack Daniels. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Well, we let you go. All right. Hey, Cheers, mate. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Cheers, Bob. Thanks for coming on, man. Ta-da. 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 Ta-da.